All right, hi guys. We are going to be talking about the New Deal programs um, that was part of the Great Depression. Um, and so make sure that you have your assignment open in Notability before you start watching this video. Um, and so I'm going to start by explaining a little bit um, about what was happening before the New Deal was in place. So during um, President Hoover, when he was president, that's when the Great Depression started. No, it's not his far fault that the Great Depression happened or anything, um, but um, it was definitely very bad when President Hoover was president, and they didn't feel like a lot of Americans didn't feel like he had done enough to try to fix it. Um, so when he was president, unemployment reached 13 million. Um, many industries and businesses were closed. Many farms were repossessed, meaning the bank took them back because the farmers couldn't pay for their land. Um, the Dust Bowl in the Great Plains was disastrous. Um, lots of times there was banks shutting down because people were taking all their money out of the bank and the banks had invested in the stock market. The stock market um, went way down in value and a lot of people, a lot of investors, including banks and other businesses who were investing, um, were really hard, hit hard by this. And it was kind of that downward spiral. It's just everyone was affected by by just the stock market losing its value, a lot of people were affected, which then became this cycle of people are spending less, people are getting laid off. Those businesses now um, that are making less are now going to make even less because no one's working to pay for these things. So basically all this downward spiral, President Hoover's reaction was like, you know, the, the business cycle will take care of things like our economy will, you know, right itself, it'll be fine, just kind of let things be, give it a little time to bounce back. And so Hoover didn't create a ton of government programs to try to fix this until it was too late, because he did eventually start some programs, but it, at this point, our economy was kind of in the pits. Um, and so before we move on and talk about these New Deal programs, I want you to think about how is like what you've learned about the Great Depression so far so think about like what we've learned over the last couple of weeks. How is it um, similar to what's happening now in like 2020? Um, for example, one similarity you could make between the Great Depression and now is just all the people being laid off of work and all the unemployment, right? Um, maybe in hearing some of these New Deal programs, you'll see other similarities between the Great Depression and what's happening now, like with the government interactions and stuff. So uh, President Herbert Hoover, he um, wasn't re-elected in 1932, FDR, Franklin Delano um, Roosevelt, he um, was elected to president and he told the people, I pledge to you, I pledge my, to myself, a new deal for the American people. So he gets elected, you can see here how easily he won. Uh, green states represent states that, her, uh, that FDR won versus red are states that uh, Herbert Hoover won. So um, Roosevelt, again, like you could have seen on the map, he won by a landslide. He had grown up in Hyde Park, New York um, City and grew up wealthy. He is um, related to Theodore Roosevelt uh, that we learned about in the um, probably last, I don't know, December or January. Um, I forget, though, exactly how they're related. I, I always forget. They're like cousins or something like that, or second cousins or an uncle or something like that. There's several, there's several families apart, though. Um, so in 1921, um, President um, Roosevelt, before he was president, obviously, but he got polio, and he um, w walked with braces for the rest of his life, and um, lots of times you'll see pictures of him and stuff in wheelchairs because he couldn't walk easily. So he stood and stuff for, like, um, speeches, but a lot of the time he was in a wheelchair because that was easier. Um, but Roosevelt believed his wealth obligated him to help others. So with my wealth, with my, where my standing in life, like this is what I want to do with it is to help others. Here you can see some pictures of him. Now, what was the New Deal? So the New Deal provided, was aimed at providing immediate relief for people that were unemployed that would um, hopefully bring about also economic recovery, so fixing the economy, making it recovery, and reform, so putting new things in place to make sure like a Great Depression never would happen again. 
So it's a series of like programs, projects, financial changes, regulations that basically FDR helped to enact and put in place um, when he was president between 1933 and 1939. Um, now there's two major sets of like legislation when a ton of new programs and stuff um, were put in place. A lot of them happened in 1933, right after he became president, and then another set happened in 1935. Sometimes you'll hear them called the New Deal and the Second New Deal. Um, so all the, the New Deal and all these new programs and stuff are, are based on this idea that the federal government was needed in order to get the country out of the Great Depression. So if you think of like nowadays, right, the federal government's doing a lot to try to get us out of this, this slump because of COVID. Um, you can see like there's these, um, the government has given um, Americans $1,200 as like a stipend to help. Um, there's been a lot of bailouts of like big businesses and stuff and providing money so that they can still, they don't have to like close. Um, and so you'll see a lot of similarities between some of these programs and what the federal government's actually doing right now. So what was the goal of these programs? There was three main um, goals or areas they're trying to fix. One is relief. So when relief, we're talking about people um, in particular, specific people that are suffering from the effects of the Great Depression. So think of people that were like unemployed or um, weren't doing well because of the Dust Bowl. That's one of the um, goals is to provide relief to them, maybe through food, maybe through extra money just to get by, unemployment checks, that kind of thing. So relief means providing relief to specific people, helping them out to get through this. Recovery is another goal of a lot of these programs um, that are part of the New Deal. Recovery means helping the economy, right? The economy is in the pits, it's in the slumps. How are we going to help the businesses? Recovery is mostly aimed at businesses. How are we going to help these businesses and the stock market and all that lift out of this? And the last R related to New Deal programs is they're aimed at reform. So remember the word reform. We've talked about it lots of times. Reform means to change something to make it better. So all these reforms are trying to fix some issues that the economy had to make sure that there's never a Great Depression like that. For example, tons and tons of banks close, right? You don't see bank after bank after bank right now closing, do you? Okay, part of the reason for that is because there was reforms or laws and stuff put in place to prevent um, some of these things from happening ever again. So I'm going to explain about some of the new programs and then you're going to be in charge of reading about six others. So I'm just going to give you some of them. Sometimes they're called alphabet soup because there were so many different ones and they went by the acronym or like the shortened version instead of saying, for example, um, the Tennessee Valley Authority, they would write, you can see here, it says TVA. So one of the first major New Deal programs was called the Federal Emergency Relief Administration, or FERA, or F-E-R-A. Um, this organization or program gave money to local and state welfare agencies to distribute the money to the unemployed. Um, and this is kind of the beginning of this welfare program where you see um, people being helped out by the government um, if they're unemployed. So like nowadays we have unemployment checks, we have food stamps, we have WIC, um, which is for women and children. Um, and so again, you can see that this money came from the federal government, but then it was given to like state governments or like local governments, and then they figured out what to do with the money, whether it was to provide food or actual money. Um, and um, we have very similar programs to this like nowadays as well. This, if we're looking at the three R's, think about which one does this fit under? Relief, recovery, or reform. So it's not really changing anything, right? So it's not re uh, reform. It's not necessarily going to get the people out of the Great Depression. So it's not really recovery either. It is focused on relieving those people, helping those people, whether through food or through um, through actually money, giving them those people money. Okay, another New Deal program, which this was, um, this doesn't really fit great under New Deal programs, 
um, because it wasn't necessarily aimed at like helping Native Americans that were suffering from the Great Depression, but it was also passed during the same time as a lot of these New Deal programs, which is why you'll see sometimes see it um, put under New Deal programs. Um, the Indian or Reorganization Act of 1934 was aimed at helping Native Americans, and it ended the sale of tribal lands, and it gave back ownership of some, like, unclaimed lands to Native American groups. Um, so it said, like, if this was Native American land that we said was, like, their, um, you know, we said this was reservation land for a certain Native American tribe, like, we're not going to sell anymore. It is that group's land. And, um, we're going to make sure that they get that land that we promised them. Um, the other thing is that it gave Native American tribes the power to manage their own affairs and establish money, um, for land purchases, purchases and ed educational assistance. So the idea was if we've said that this, you know, for example, um, Leech Lake or Red Lake, let's say we said it's theirs, we're going to stop taking land and we're also going to give them more ability to, um, run their own affairs, which is why you see, um, like tribal councils or city councils now, um, within, <coughs> um, different, uh, Native American tribes. Um, and this still kind of remains one of the more basic, still, uh, basic legislation that still concerns Native American affairs. Um, even though this was aimed at helping Native Americans, in some ways it did hurt to further, um, pull apart, many uh, traditional like uh, Native American cultures because um, because it um, sorry guys my phone was ringing <laughs> um, but you can see here it talking about like they can manage their own affairs the problem was when Native American tribes were given kind of a lot of their own ability to run themselves, there was a lot of push from the government to adopt certain types of like governmental systems um, on the reservation. So it's still a very like white dominated policy or culture instead of Native Americans adopting their own culture to rule. Um, another... Um, program that was created during the New Deal was called the Public Works Administration or PWA. You'll notice there's another one called WPA and they're very similar because the P or WPA stands for Works Progress um, Administration, I think, or Works Progress Association versus this one is Public Works Administration. So they're very similar and they do similar things. So the Public Works Administration spent large sums of money on various public works projects, so things that would benefit all Americans. Um, the main focus was large-scale construction projects, so things like schools, courthouses, city halls, hospitals, and basically it was designed to spend big bucks or big money on big projects. So the reason for this is to basically give a whole bunch, I mean, obviously it's helping out um, to provide a lot of public things that people are gonna use, but it's also to provide a lot of jobs to people. So one of the main reasons for this Public Works Administration is aimed at relief. So it's providing jobs to unemployed people. Um, so here is one specific PWA project. Um, it's a um, major dam that's still around today in um, Oregon in the Columbia River. So another... Um, New Deal program was the Securities and Exchange Commission, or the SEC. Um, this organization or commission was in charge of regulating the stock market, and its goal was to increase confidence in the um, increase confidence in the stock market so that people would reinvest. So this is aimed at kind of two things: partly recovery, but mostly reform. Right, regulation and reforming the um, stock market, basically watching out, making sure that this crash would never happen again. The Securities and Exchange Commission still exists today, and it's still in charge of making sure that the stock market is being run well. Um, so this uh, organization or program was aimed mainly at reform, but it could also be recovery in the sense that if they increase confidence in the market, it could get people to start investing again, which could get the economy moving again or like recover. Um, some other programs that you are going to now read about are the CCC or the Civilian Conservation Corps, the AAA or the Agriculture Adjustment Administration, 
the NIRA or the National Industrial Recovery Act. You'll also sometimes see it called NRA, not to be confused with National Rifle Association. So NRA, when we're talking about this time period, is National Recovery Act. The FDIC, still around today, should sound familiar. You see it all over banks. It's the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. And like I was saying earlier, the Works Progress Administration. So, um, oh, and Social Security Act, which hopefully sounds familiar to you. Um, so you're going to be in charge now to finish this assignment. You're going to read about these six. It's like a paragraph or less per thing. And you're going to fill in the three boxes on each of these um, different programs that were part of the New Deal. Before you go to do that, though, there's one more thing to answer, or a couple more questions that you have still to answer. I think probably seven and eight still. Um, so the New Deal represented a significant shift in political policy in the U.S. Um, this included increased government control over the economy and the money supply, which meant that the government got bigger in um, D.C. So the federal government's getting bigger, right, because they're having more influence over various parts of the economy. They're putting um, all this more, spending more money on programs like the WPA and PWA. Um, they were intervening. You're going to read about the Agricultural Indu Adjustment um, Act and the, um, the NIRA. So there's going to be government intervention to kind of control prices and agricultural production, right? More government involvement is getting bigger. Um, and this is kind of the beginning of when you see this federal welfare state, meaning the federal government will step in to help people that are like unemployed or businesses that are failing, okay, which we still have today. Now, some pros or good things about the New Deal. It did restore optimism and hope to many Americans, and it did provide necessary, necessary relief to many. So it did help out a lot of people, and it provided a little more hope, like, we'll get through this, we'll get out of the Great Depression. Some cons or maybe drawbacks is that ultimately the government spent all this money, and it didn't really fix the Depression. So years had went by, and people were still, there was still high unemployment rate, there was still a Depression. Um, and obviously, if you spend a lot, that means you have a lot of debt. So our country had a lot of money to suddenly pay back. And basically, many would argue that it left people a little too dependent on the government. Okay, Saying like, well, if something bad happens, the government's got my back. Which is good. You should have confidence in your government. But at the same time, sometimes you are in charge of fixing your own life. Um, and so some people say now it's left people too dependent on getting help from the government anytime they might have an issue. Um, and another con or drawback is that ultimately it didn't end the Great Depression. What ends the Great Depression is World War II. So basically what gets us out of the Great Depression is a whole bunch of factories start opening up and gearing their factories to um, create weapons and other things for war because World War II starts. Um, so in a period of months between 1939 and 1940, um, World War II produced what years of political struggle and new programs had failed to do um, and end to the Great Depression. Um, so again, um, New Deal isn't good or bad. I mean, there was good and bad about it. Um, but ultimately, what gets us out of the Great Depression is World War II, and suddenly the U.S., just like in World War I, the U.S. is producing tons and tons of war materials for the Allies, and that's really what gets us out of the Great Depression. All right, um, you can obviously contact me if you have any questions. Otherwise, um, thanks for listening, and have a good rest of your day.